Hi, this is Gary. Welcome to today's video. So today it's another new parcel. Here we go. Got this envelope from China. In here there are actually two pens. What we're going to do, we'll unenvelope it because it's not a box. So how can you unbox it? We'll unenvelope these two pens. We'll take a quick look at them. We'll fill them with some nice ink and then we'll do a writing sample. So join me now down on the mat. Let's take a look at these pens and get my first impressions of them. So here we are down on the mat. Time to take a look at what's in the envelope. To make it easier, I've already cut off the end of the envelope just so we can get straight on to looking at what's in there. So the first pen, I'm going to ease it out here. This is a pen BBS pen and it's a model 494. You see it comes in this plastic box, so it's actually quite well packed. It's a fine nib. Let me just ease this out. Here it comes. Wow, it doesn't want to come out, does it? Oh, that's quite a tight fit in there. Let's fetch out the pen. I've got to be honest, it's not that it's not really badly packaged. Why I'm saying that, this pen, it cost me $6.52 Australian. Dirt cheap. So let's unscrew this. It's a demonstrator pen. And as we can see here, it's got a really plain nib. It's different than a lot of the pen BBS nibs I've had before, so I'm interested to see how it goes. It does feel quite light, but as I say, it's a piston filler. So for the amount of money I paid for it, it's going to be interesting to see how this one goes. Let me fetch in a pebble. I'll just pop that up at the top. And let's take a look at the second pen. So the second pen, well, it's in bubble wrap. Let's quickly take that out. And this one, although it doesn't say so on the package, this one is by Hong Dian, model 960. Let's just quick, take a quick look at this. Let's just take that cap off so we look at the nib. That's a fairly decorative nib. We'll take a closer look in a second. Let me fetch in my second pebble. Right, let's start by looking at the, pe at the pen BBS. So it's a small pen. It's very, very light. For what I paid for it though, it's what I expected. At the top here, so we've got a little derm on the top and then that comes down to this plastic cap we've got a silver colored clip yeah it's not too bad to spring that the rest of the body is transparent so as we go down we've got this transparent cap which comes out and up to here where we've got the screws so how many turns to come off one one and a half two, two and a half, three turns to come off. So quite a bit of effort to take that off. I would have liked to have seen that down to maybe one to one and a half. As I said in the earlier part, that nib is quite unusual for a pen BBS nib. It doesn't look nowhere as decorative. And I've got to be honest, I like the look of it. I really do. I think that this looks really nice. The nib then comes down into the section. Now I'm hoping, because it looks like that feed is transparent as well, I'm hoping that means when we put the ink in that we can get to see the ink going through that feed. That'll be interesting to look at. Coming to the body, it's piston filler. There's a piston going down and up. So the body is tapering down till we come to here. We've got what looks like a metalish cap. And then into the piston filling knob, which again is transparent. So it's going for that transparent theme throughout the whole pen. Really nice looking, simple looking. It is very light. I mean, I, I don't know how to really say it. it's one of the lightest pens I've got. I'm just going to fetch in a Jinhao 922 just for comparison. Now this is also a, a really cheap pen. It was like $2 Australian. So it's a little bit bigger than that Jinhao 922. Be interesting to see what it writes like there. 
just swap that over and fetch in this one. So I'll say this is a Hongdian 960. Now originally when I was ordering this, I was looking for a yellow one, but unfortunately it wasn't in stock. So I've got this black color instead. I went for black because, well, you can put anything into a black pen really, can't you? You're not limited by the ink. So let's take a look at this one. So here we've got a flat cap. So hopefully that's coming focus. We've got a logo on here. That's actually quite a pretty looking logo. Then we've got this gold colored clip. This clip, yeah, springy, not overly so. The cap, we're tapering out until here where we get to the end of the clip. Then it seems to be going straight down to this gold band here. Now it comes off in half, one, one and a half turns. So that's more like it. That's what we like to see. That then reveals this nib. This is quite a pretty looking nib, quite intricate looking. And this nib, it's in fine. And I really like the engraving on here. To be honest, it reminds me of a pen BBS nib. And if you'd have given me the two pens, I would have said that this black one is more likely to be the pen BBS just purely because of that nib. So anyway, from the nib, we come into the section. The section is fairly short, which that may be fine. I'll know better when I'm writing with it. At the tip, we've got a little rest here. It's not that deep, so I think that might be fine because I don't like the ones where they've got a big rest at the end of the section. I find they dig into my finger. So we'll see how that goes. So there we've got the threads. If we take the body off, inside we've got a converter. So that goes down and then up. There's a little plastic ball inside there to agitate it. Let's just seal that back up again. The body, again, seems to be a slight tapering all the way down until we come to the end. And then we've just got a blank cap here, which doesn't twist or anything, it's all sealed on. And that's got a flat bottom. So looking at the two pens, I certainly like the look of the Hong Dian, but that was 35 Aussie dollars. When you compare that with the pen BBS, which was $6.52 Aussie, really it's hard to compare the two when you're looking at that sort of price difference. But yeah, my initial thoughts, as I say, like them both, but that pen BBS seems very light. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to step away from the camera. I'm going to clean out both these pens. When I come back, we'll take a look at the inks that I'm going to use. We'll fill the pens. We'll do a writing sample. And then I'll sum up with my thoughts based on the whole of the looks and the writing. So here I am back after giving them a good clean out. Now, one thing I'm going to say, as I was cleaning these out, I was actually struggling to get that Hong Dian to clean out properly. The agitator inside the converter, it seemed to be getting stuck at the bottom. So when I was trying to pump out my clean water to give it a clean through, it just wasn't letting any through. So that's something I need to keep an eye on when I'm writing. It could be I need to take apart that converter and take out that agitator, but we'll see how it goes. So let's start by looking at the ink for the 494. So what I've decided to use here is a diamond ink called Mondobo's Hat. Beautiful dark purple color. Now in my swatch here, you can see we've got some areas of lighter and then darker. I'm not expecting to see anything like that out of this pen. Remember, it's a fine nib. So I don't think there'll be much in the way of shading, but it'd be something that's interesting to see. So let me fetch that in. So here we go, Mondobo's Hat. When I ordered this ink, Yes, I know it's a purple ink, and I did want a purple ink. The reason I ordered it, it's the name. Isn't that a brilliant name, Mondobo's Hat? I thought that was absolutely awesome, and that's what really prompted me to get this ink. So I've got the converter there down at the bottom. Pen goes in. Let's twist this up. And I'm going to take it out now. Normally I would do this twice, but I've got a good fill already on the first go. So what's the point in doing it again? Just wipe off the excess ink, pop that cap on, and there it is, that's the first pen done. Okay, let's pop the lid back on and get this bottle out of the way. For the Hong Dian, what I've decided to do is go with a really dark chocolate color. So I've decided to go with Diamine Chocolate Brown. Again, it's a fine nib, so I'm not expecting too much. And it's one of the reasons why I want a darker ink. So hopefully when we get the writing, we do actually get to see a little bit of character coming through. I'm not sure how much of that will be there. That's again, part of the reason why we want to experiment, isn't it? So we can see. So yeah, Diamine Chocolate Brown, again, 
it's got like nutty colours. To me, it's it's darker than what I would associate with coffee with chocolate. Yes, this bit here maybe, but here I don't know. That's more like the darker chocolates. So it really depends what your tastes are. Let's fetch that ink in. So here we go, diamine chocolate brown. Let's see how this one fills when you consider the problems I had when I was cleaning it out. So there we are, the converter's already down at the bottom. And it goes to the ink. And let's fetch that converter up. Well, there was next to no ink went in there. I'm gonna push it back down. Let's fetch it up again. That's better. I'm gonna go down one more time and then back up. So after a bit of a poor start, which could have been maybe I didn't have it pushed in far enough, we've got another nice fill. We'll just clean that nib off, get rid of all the excess ink, pop the pen back together. So there we have the Hong Dian 960 filled. Let me just pop the lid back on here. So, so far so good, liking both of them. They're both filled quite nicely. The next question though, and the most important question, how do they write? So I'll fetch in my trusty notepad. This is an Oxford notepad and it uses the optic paper, which is a really nice fountain pen friendly paper. So let's get on with our writing samples. So the first pen we've got, well, before I even start writing, look, it was fairly short. Does it post? Yes, it does, it posts quite nicely and it's secure. That gives it that extra bit of length, but not a lot of weight. So let's try this. So we've got a pen BBS. Model 494. With a medium nib. The ink. It's diamine. On dollars hat. Really nice looking purple ink. As I say so far not really seeing much in the way of shading but it's a fine nib. I'm not expecting to see that. Let's look at our drying times. We go immediate. It's fairly dry. Fine nib. What to expect? I'm going to wait for 10 seconds. You know that's drying off quite nicely there. 30 seconds. Look, and that's dry, really nice and dry after 30 seconds, so it would be a nice one for taking notes with. Now, I'm going to correct myself. It's Mondobbo's hat. Not Mondollo's. I should read my notes before I start writing, really. For the next test, I'm going to move the mic close to the page so you can hear as I write. That's actually quite nice. There's definitely feedback there. You can definitely feel that it's writing. You can hear that you're writing. The ink flows really well. It's not scratchy. I'm not feeling it drag across the paper. It is really nice to write. Taking a quick look at the writing, I am seeing little tiny bits of shading trying to come through. You know, on the T's we can see it, on that A we can see it. We've got that W and the I are darker than the Z. So it's trying to bring some shade in that. Look at that G, you know, it starts nice and pale and dark and stuff. So that's something I'm actually fairly impressed. As I said, it's a fine nib. I wasn't expecting to see any shade. One of the new tests I'm doing, I'm just going to lay it in my hand and I'm going to draw across the paper. So this is zero pressure from my hand onto the nib. And we are getting a line there. So. You know, you don't need a lot of pressure to get some writing out of this pen. I'm actually quite impressed with it. And for what I paid for a piston filler, you know, I think that's really nice. Would I have liked it with a broader nib? Obviously I would because I like my mediums and my broads, but I'm really pleased with this. Let's look at the 960. I'm just going to move this paper up before I start writing. So this pen, a little bit longer, but I'm going to feel more comfortable posting this as well. If I post it, yeah, that's nice and solid. And it does give it that bit more then. So let me just twist that cap around there. So what have we got here? We've got a Hong Dian. The 
960, also in a fine nib. The ink, diamine, chocolate brown. Gosh, isn't that a dark ink? Now, already here, you can see where it burped a little tiny bit when I started writing. That could have been as a result of it just being newly filled. But that's something I'm going to have to keep an eye on when I'm doing my testing with this. Because if it's going to be burping all the time, it's not really much use to me. And there are things that I can do to try and fix it. But let's see how it goes. On the preview camera that I've got, this looks lovely brown colour. Really does. Where I'm sat at the moment, it looks really dark, almost black. So I'm interested to see how this dries off even more. I'm talking about drying, let's check our drying times. So, immediate. Wow, nice and wet pen there. You can see that gorgeous brown in it. I'm going to wait for 10 seconds. So the same manufacturers, this is an awful lot wetter. 30 seconds. Well, last test, we leave it for one minute. After one minute, wow, there's still a lot of wetness there. So certainly, this is not going to be an ink I'm going to be using when I've got a load of writing to do, because if I have to wait, you know, up to two minutes, say, uh, between pages, that's going to really slow down my thinking. It's going to move the paper up very slightly. My next test, I'm going to reposition the mic, and we'll do my writing sample. So with that sample, again, to me, the writing looks very dark. But on my camera preview, there's a lot more brown coming through. So that's interesting. I can still, I can see some shading. So the top of the G is a bit lighter. The top of the A here, top of the Q. So there's a little bit of shading coming through. So that's something I will, again, look for in my future tests. So let's do that final test, that drag test. So there it is, lightly on the paper. Yeah, that writes quite nice as well. You know, we're getting the ink coming through with no pressure. So that's not too bad. Let me just clear out this paper. I'll fetch the pens back into the middle and then I'll give my final thoughts. So today's pens was the Pen BBS 494 and the Hongdian 960. Very different price ranges. You know, I've said it a couple of times. This one, this Pen BBS was $6.52. The Hongdian, well, that was $35. So definitely a bigger price. Both the pens, they write quite nicely. You know, they're fine nibs, so they're right in how I'd expect them to. I would like that the 494s are piston filler. And at that price, well, you can't really go wrong, can you? I also like the looks of the Hondian. You know, it's stylish. You know, we've got this gorgeous black and then the com complement with the gold. Really looks nice. I'm not sure about my ink choice for the 960. It could be the ink is actually too dark. But that's something, I think it's because I've got really bright lights, which does affect how I see the colours when I'm recording. So when I get to writing normally with it, it may not be as bad. For the Pen BBS, I love the speed at which the ink dries. I think that's a really good combination. Problem is, you know, it could be that it's just a fast drying ink. You never know until you try it with multiple inks, which is what I'll be doing over the next few months. I love the weight of the Hongdian. It's definitely more chunky. I can feel it's in my hand. It's not as heavy as some of my pens, but that's fine. It's still a nice pen. So this is my unboxing of the Pen BBS 494 and the Hongdian 960. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you have, please hit that thumbs up button, give it a like. Have you got one of these pens? How about the inks? What do you think about the inks? I'd love to get your thoughts and your comments, so please drop a comment down below. Let's kickstart that conversation. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel so that you can get new videos as I release them. I'll talk to you again soon.